So I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. Perhaps uh, one councillor could just text Mayor Ireland and find out if everything's all right, if we are expecting him to come in. And uh, we can call the meeting to order at 9.33. I'll ask for any additions to the agenda, which you have in front of you this morning. No additions, deletions or changes to the agenda. All right, then could I have a motion to approve the agenda of the December 22nd, 2020 Committee of the Hall meeting, please. Council McGrath, thank you. Discussion, none needed, all in favor. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Councillors, you have in front of you the minutes of the December 8, 2020 Committee of the Whole meeting. Having had an opportunity to review those, are there any changes or uh, edits, deletions, or additions needed to those minutes? Last going once, seeing nothing, then could I have a motion please to approve the minutes of the Tuesday, December 8th, 2020 Committee of the Whole meeting. Councilor Demota, thank you very much. All in favor? The motion is carried, thank you very much. So that moves us directly into agenda item number five, presentations. And we have presentation this morning, verbally from the Emergency Coordination Center, an update. And uh, who will be speaking to that? Morning, Mr. Greathead. Good morning, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, can I uh, circle back on this one? I just uh, don't see Gordon on the room here and he was gonna give the update. All right, thank you very much. Back. Well, we will then set uh, agenda item 5.1 aside and we will proceed to agenda item six, business arising from the minutes. Councillors or administration, is there anything arising from last committee of the whole minutes that you would like to raise? Well, at this rate, we'll be out of here in 20 minutes. All right, seeing nothing, we can move directly into agenda item number seven, policy and governments. These are uh, standing items on the agenda to provide opportunities to bring forward concerns, particularly around uh, COVID and secondly, around uh, strategic priorities. So item 7.1, public health updates and concerns for council discussion. Councillors, do you have anything you'd like to bring up under this topic. I'm going for the record this morning. All right, then uh, item 7.2 around council strategic priorities, anything to bring forward on that. Maybe uh, I'll just take this opportunity to confirm that we do plan to meet as strategic priorities committee later today. Is that correct? Are we, I had sort of missed the memo on that and saw that just uh, last night in the email. Okay, good, so that is the plan. So uh, is there anything to bring forward here today? All right. Well, then we will proceed, uh, I would like to get that ECC item dealt with, but I guess we're still not in a position to do that. So I will then move us directly into the meat of our agenda today. Item eight, brief updates. And the first is item 8.1, request for direction on utility fees for 2021. I will take a moment to bring that agenda item up on my own agenda here. And Mr. Greathead, are you ready to uh, provide a brief verbal background on this? 
Uh, Deputy Mayor, I see uh, Mr. Hutton's been able to join us. Oh, okay. Uh, for the BCC update, if you want to start there. I would like to uh, try to dispense with that item first. So uh, apologies to everyone for jumping around in the agenda, but let's suspend item 8.1 and move back to agenda item 5.1, uh, Emergency Coordination Center. And Mr. Hutton, thank you. Please uh, carry on when you're ready. Uh, good morning. morning. I'm sorry, there has been a miscommunication. I was not aware I was going to be asked to give a ECC update. Um, I uh, well, um, <laughs> would you like to proceed? We're, we're certainly... Um, well, uh, we, we give you plenty of latitude if you're, if you're um, uncertain, yeah. Okay, well, I can give you a very brief summary. I don't have up-to-date numbers other than those case counts in Jasper, uh, which we, over the past week, have seen declining, uh, which is a good trend. We are still sitting quite high at uh, 43 active cases, which puts us still in one of the top 20 um, locations within the province as far as infection rates go. I did not get a chance to check our R value no, sorry, I did look yesterday and it's slightly below one. And I, that's a new metric they've been publishing, um, which essentially is an evaluation of how many people an individual in, uh, infects with COVID. So obviously more than one is a negative metric where you're gonna see numbers growing and less than one is where you would hope to see numbers declining. And the Jasper R rating as of yesterday was just below one as well. Uh, so that's a good trend. We had been above that. Um, we, I did hear, uh, though it is rumor at this point, there have been a few other affected uh, members at the seniors uh, lodges. I don't have up to date figures on those. And then province wide, the numbers are declining on a daily rate. Although the hospitalizations and ICU bed occupied by COVID patients are still quite high. And I think um, locally we've done uh, what we can at this point. It's, it seems to be more of a waiting game just to see where we're going within the community. I really don't know how busy we're going to be over Christmas and how that's going to affect uh, infection rates within Jasper. And that is sort of a very brief off the cuff uh, easy summary other than uh, we are meeting, uh, although we will be taking pause over the Christmas break, but all of us on our ECC team will be monitoring the situation and ready to uh, um, have a meeting and uh, take some action if necessary. But at this point with the numbers going down, I think we're just in a, a waiting game right now. Thank you very much, and Mr. Hutton. Questions or comments from council? Councilor Juno. I'll break the silence. <laughs> Still silent. Uh, the trend is, is, is positive. Just before Christmas for us, it's, I think it's, uh, the trend is the key. Uh, I have a question for maybe Mr. Hutton, a comment. Has there been uh, an area that caused us to go so high so quickly? All of a sudden, was there, was there, not, I don't want to name people or groups, but was there an activity or a lack of an activity that may have contributed to that huge spike? Uh, and, it, and it was significant. Uh, there must have been some discussion as to why it rose and what we can do to reduce it. Although it's, it is on the downward trend, so I don't want it to be sounding like critical or so on and so forth, but there must have been some discussion I'd be interested in hearing that. Thank you. I second your opinion, um, but Alberta Health Services is very reserved in the detail uh, around the cases that they provide us. Uh, we don't want to act on sort of half information or guesswork and without um, AHS sharing really any details about the 
And I I'm not, no, don't mean patient details, but details about the cases in general. We, we just don't get that information. Uh, so we can't uh, really summarize on that. Thank you very much. Anything else from Council? Councillor McGrath. Thank you for the update this morning, Mr. Hutton. I have one question for you. I'm assuming that because we have the physicians of Jasper included now in the ECC, that the contact tracing is also being done locally for those who participate in that local contact tracing. Are we seeing greater awareness and greater knowledge of how transmission is happening within our community because of that link that is special and unique to the community of Jasper because of the work that the Cottage Medical Clinic and the physicians of Jasper have offered our community? That's a good question. Uh, I, I don't really know. Um, I think the contact tracing, um, I, from what I understand, I think, I'm trying to summarize an answer here. I think those that are willfully ignorant at this point uh, choose to be, and the, the contact tracing, although a useful tool, will only reach those at this point that are um, reachable. And I don't mean by directly contacting, I mean by getting people to believe and comply with the regulations. I think the sentiment we see through the ECC is that there is a demographic that just doesn't want to accept or believe or feel the pressure or a heed to the pressure to comply. So I think I'm answering your question with that response. Um, the contact tracing if definitely does help those that want to be informed, but the we keep hearing over and over again that those there's those out there that are blissfully unaware for whatever reason. Thanks, Mr. Hutton. Council McGrath, anything further on that? Um, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to, I will take this opportunity to address one piece that Mr. Hutton mentioned, which was um, uh, rumors around the community. And um, just putting on for a moment my hat as chair of Evergreens Foundation, I will confirm because there has been conflicting information that um, in the designated assisted living wing of Alpine Summit Seniors Lodge, um, the outbreak has extended to all residents um, have now tested positive. And um, sorry, I'm sorry, that's happening to me again. And there are now are three deaths confirmed in um, the designated assistant living wing of Alpine Summit Seniors Lodge. I believe the reason that those have not shown on the um, Alberta Health Services reporting is that the formalities of confirming the deaths due to COVID uh, have not yet transpired. And there has now been uh, two cases confirmed among residents in the lodge itself, as opposed to the isolated designated assisted living wing. And there have been um, numbers, I'm not sure of the exact, and it's probably not that important in terms of numbers, but there have been numbers of cases um, among um, some staff members of both sides of that facility. So um, quite a substantial proportion of the cases in Jasper have been uh, linked to Alpine Summit Seniors Lodge and in particular, the designated assistant living wing of that facility. So uh, because of the presence, presence of rumors and conflicting information, I just wanted to confirm uh, that. Uh, so families were all informed. So I think it is fair that that is uh, public information. So, 
Thank you. Anything further? Mr. Hutton, oh, General, uh, Councilor McGrath, go ahead. Well, I'd just like to offer you um, appreciation for your role, Deputy Mayor Butler, on the board and as the chair of the Evergreens Foundation. And, you know, we can we can feel it and we we know how hard it is and sincere appreciation for the role that you play on the board and for the passion and commitment along with compassion that you have for your job and for the representation of the seniors in the community. So much love to all of the residents and their families. And thank you specifically for being the Evergreens representative on behalf of council. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to collect myself because I wanted to just add one more thing. Uh, as a uh, board member and chair of the board um, with respect to particularly that COVID outbreak, um, I do nothing um, but probably listen quite a lot. Um, but I want to extend my um, appreciation and gratitude and acknowledgement for all the staff involved. Um, you know, it's worth pointing out that all of our facilities within the Evergreens region have been completely free of COVID all this time. And um, the efforts made by staff have been nothing short of exemplary in all cases. There have been numerous audits by Public Health and Alberta Health Service of uh, the measures taken in all of the facilities. And um, those audits have all turned up nothing but um, almost perfect results. Uh, the suggestions made for improvements have been at such a um, minuscule level that it's just uh, been uh, really rewarding to see. And so I think that makes it just all the harder for the staff and residents to find that notwithstanding all of those efforts that um, this outbreak has transpired. So I just hope uh, the entire community realizes that um, these things happen. And uh, this has happened despite uh, virtually heroic efforts on everyone's part to uh, avoid an outbreak, but in those kind of circumstances of people living in close quarters, um, when an outbreak starts, it's, uh, it's wildfire. So um, thank you for providing me the opportunity to just acknowledge all those efforts of all of those staff, medical and um, Alpine Summit, both. So uh, anything further on that? All right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Hutton, for the update and thank you, councillors. So we'll uh, then move back to uh, agenda item eight and 8.1 is the request for direction on utility fees. And Mr. Greathead, did you want to start that conversation for us? Good morning again, Deputy Mayor and Council. Um, so we're back at the uh, to discuss the utility rates model and uh, how we're going to go through um, and and build the rate structure on this one. Um, so at the last council meeting, there was a discussion on um, you know maybe setting the rates um, uh, based on the CPI or the Consumer Price Index or a more modest rate change than uh, what was presented by uh, administration. This year, um, we understand that it is a, you know, a very trying year for a lot of a lot of people and a lot of businesses. Um, and if I can refer to um, the mayor's comment about feeling like Sisyphus um, at times, uh, we're back. So um, we did have uh, an emotion passed um, by council uh, to. Uh, aim for roughly $750,000 in increased revenue over sewer water. Uh, Ms. Melanchuk has prepared um, some numbers too that is attached in the report uh, showing that we still need a, like a, a, an incremental increase in the water levy, also um, some more um, for the sewer levy. And so we're still looking at um, an increase of $852,000 over the last year. Um, we would really like to maintain the work that we did on the 
rate structure of the bylaws. So even if for this year, um, we're at a lower amount, uh, we still think we made some very good progress on our utilities models. Um, and that would be uh, the user account fees that uh, we would like to have maintained as well as, um, uh, you know, we, we had opted for tiering um, and, and shown model for tiering, but that uh, we've taken out for this year, but we'd still like the availability and the flexibility to uh, bring this up at further times. And um, the seasonal, or sorry, the, the um, uh, rate fee uh, or user fee that we're suggesting as well stay into the bylaw. That helps cover us for a lot of the seasonal work that gets done. We have many um, residents and businesses that are only operating during the summer months, but uh, the um, we still maintain the services. Uh, we still have uh, the bleeder programs in some of these properties that are running through. Um, we are incurring costs at these uh, seasonal sites. So uh, we think that it's um, prudent to maintain the uh, connection fees or the user fees based on connections. So at this point, um, we're just listening and uh, see uh, the direction that council wants so we can prepare this by to come back for the first meeting in January of this year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greathead. I will open floor for council questions. Councillor Journeau. Thank you, Mr. Greyhead, for your presentation. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Butler, for this. Uh, in your comments, Mr. Greyhead, you indicated that we have uh, seasonal users and so on and so forth. Uh, do we have connection fees for uh, closing, opening and closing water for that? And secondly, uh, you mentioned bleeders. Uh, is it the case that seasonal users who are closed in the wintertime would have a bleeder service? That's the first uh, two questions. Deputy Mayor, if I might, um, a lot of these seasonal properties uh, do turn on the bleeders when they close their business uh, Thanksgiving weekend and that'll be running all year long. Uh, we've been encouraging residents to actually delay and business, businesses to delay when they uh, turn on the leaders. The frost takes a long, long time to get uh, deep enough to really do affect the services. We used to have the program um, starting for November 30th, December 1st. We're actually saying, and, and what we've learned over the last few years is they, the frost doesn't get down on the ground deep enough till February at the earliest. So that's when we should actually um, implement the, the bleeder program. And also the bleeder program, there's an awful lot of issues that uh, operations would like and, and the utilities department would like to look in over the next year. Some of the, uh, the way the program is working, it's not effective um, and it's not balanced by any means. Uh, as for the turn on and turn offs of the water, uh, it's, that's another thing that we um, as administration would do. Um, bring forward again, uh, we're not prepared at this point, but the service, uh, the turn on, turn offs, the fee is so negligible and quite often it doesn't get charged. Um, I, I'd say most of the time uh, that, that service doesn't get charged to the residents. So, uh, you know, whether it's a plumbing repair uh, that, you know, they have to uh, do some work in the house and the valve inside the house doesn't work. We're constantly uh, getting calls for that kind of service. Uh, and again, historically, it's just been one of those things that's been cumbersome and uh, the, it, it, the fee for it isn't worth the um, effort of preparing the paperwork and, and tracking it down administratively. So it just hasn't been charged that much um, or regularly at all, uh, is my understanding. Councillor uh, Jerno, go ahead. Uh, follow up, please. And, uh, thank you. So. Uh, if on your commentary about the bleeder valves, so some of these outlying hotel properties that have 40 cabs, would they have water running at 40 units? In other words, they have bleeder bleeders service, water service at 40 of those cabins? Deputy Mayor, um, to speak to that, uh, the ones on 93A are on a seasonal line. 
so those aren't um and i'm not sure of what other okay. uh, uh each individual property scenario is i do know that we do have some massive disparities uh in the water um in in the bleeder program some of the credits are um are quite substantial and um you know, administration, we will be proposing going forward into the next year, a cap on the actual bleeder um, credit. Uh, some, some of them are, you know, they're meant to have a small trickle of water. And in reality, you only need the um, such low flow that it would only be about the, um, the thickness of the lead of a pencil is what should be happening and what should be running through. Um, quite often, some of these bleeders, um, and the credits that are assessed are for a half inch um, hose bib, just uh, letting go full bore. Uh, and, and again, we do not uh, get into these properties, um, you know, to see what's going on. All we can really do is, you know, unless we get a service call to attend a property, um, you know, that's when we, we notify, uh, notice it. And that's some of the reasons why uh, administration was asking for further support on the budget and for staffing uh, levels and to go in and start doing the meter inspections and, and making sure that we are looking after the uh, after things right but we're still got a long way to go well, I thank you for your fine work on the investigative side and the disparities that are occurring on on these bleeders it concerns me very much that we have a lot of bleeders there is technology uh, available to uh, uh, freely move water back and forth for places that are shut down. Uh, so talking about businesses that are closed on weekends, for example, and seasonal operators. There's technology around, and I don't think that the taxpayers or the community should be should be uh, supporting uh, leader service. That's that's ancient and uh, uh, waste of water. And don't forget, we treat that water. And then we also process the sewage as a result of that water. So I, I'd be uh, very supportive of a program to completely review this and I commend your work on that, Mr. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Butler. Um, through you to Mr. Greathead. Um, firstly, uh, let me say that uh, your reference again to, to Sisyphus, which I think um, was a reference I made some time ago. Um, the great distinction I want to draw here is that um, Sisyphus was being intentionally punished. Um, it's certainly not our intent to punish you for any of your work, uh, Mr. Greathead. Uh, and although you may feel punished, it's just a consequence of of a number of other matters. Um, I, I would like to return to, to the pressing question, and that is the form of the bylaw that we might see in January, recognizing that there is some urgency to get this bylaw in place for two reasons. Firstly, we have to have a bylaw to impose utility fees in the new year. And secondly, um, this is a critical um, precondition to setting a budget. So I, I, I need to better understand um, where we might be at in terms of the actual bylaw. A week or so ago, um, I guess it was the last meeting exactly a week ago, we saw a draft bylaw which had changes, some in yellow, some in green, plus a schedule of rates. And I'd like to know whether if council was to accept the proposed changes, that is those in yellow and those in green and pass such a bylaw and amend only schedule one um, to reflect a lower amount of additional revenue and perhaps even down to um, the revenue that we obtain through utilities in the current year, is that achievable with the proposed changes that we saw last week? Or do some of those proposed changes necessarily alter the revenue that would be generated 
by the new bylaw. Deputy Mayor, um, yes, and that's why we didn't provide, uh, you know, a, a template of the bylaw right now. This, uh, I believe, we can get that worked out for the January fifth meeting um, with the different variants. This uh, right now, Ms. Malinchuk's on the on the line, and she can uh, better speak to uh, the the actual preparation of the bylaw to come forward. Um, but I believe that you know after this discussion, we are going to have enough uh, to go back and, and fill, fill the, uh, the numbers in, uh, do, do the work and figure out where we are um, on the recommendations for council. So I can ask Ms. Malinchuk to uh, speak on this. Ms. Malinchuk. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor, through to you, Rishup. Um, so the uh, changes that occurred within the bylaw indicated in yellow and green are only um, very, most of them are just uh, to simplify the budget or to, sorry, bylaw, budget's on my mind, uh, simplify the bylaw and put a lot of the numbers that were within the text of the bylaw within the schedule. Um, the only things that were different um, and I know that Mr. Greathead can um, speak more to these were about, um, uh, I was trying to bring it up quickly before I was called on, um, was about um, uh, the water, or so, uh, sorry, sewer that is not, and they're not connected to the water, the municipal water. Um, so that is Whistler's campground, I believe, and Jasper Park Lodge. And I was trying to look up the clause on the bylaw, but I haven't been able to pull it up quite yet. Um, and then, yeah, so today, if given more direction on the context of the figures that council would like to see within the budget, then all I have to do is alter the figures within schedule one to reflect what would be within the budget. Um, so when the conversations shifted uh, last Tuesday, um, that's why uh, we brought it back because um, I would have to rework uh, the, the numbers within the budget to work with this bylaw. And then that would stay in the context of the budget going forward in the approval of the full budget. Thank you. Go ahead, Mira. Thank you for that. Um, I noticed my my tablet did uh, freeze up for a bit, so I might have missed something and it might have been the most important thing you said, I'm not sure, but um, what I did here was was encouraging. Um, I, I am concerned about discussion a week ago about a change to um, the manner in which um, at least one person connected only to the sewer um, might be billed and that would be a change from um, a percentage of operating costs to um, a percentage of capital costs. But I can't find that um, particular reference in last week's proposed bylaw. Is it there? Did I misunderstand? Or is there a, a contemplated change that would affect um, one user connected only to the wastewater treatment plant and not to the water system? Deputy Mayor, if I may, there there is a, a provision in the um, I'm I'm trying to look it up right now as well. Um, as presented last week, there is a provision where um, users that are solely hooked up to the uh, wastewater services pay a percentage of flow uh, into the wastewater treatment plant. So, um, how it's been charged uh, in historically was there was an operating uh, cost. Uh, for the contract operator and uh, say uh, JPL, for example, would be charged a percentage of the flow um, that hit the wastewater treatment plant and they would pay a percentage on the operating contract. So um, the operating contract that we had previously in place, if they were using seven, um, I'm just pulling this number out because uh, it's quite common um, and, and applicable. But if they had 17% of the total flow 
of the um, into the wastewater treatment plant, um, they would only be paying 17% of the cost of the operating contract. And that worked out to about um, $7,000 per cubic meter. Now, if they were to be charged at the rate, uh, sorry, it'd be $7,000 uh, per month. And, and uh, so that's 10% of what it would be charged if it was charged per cubic meter. So if we do the same um, formula and, and they pay the residential rate of $2.43 per cubic meter, um, their, their bill would be climbing exponentially. Uh, so that's what that reference was. And that's why we were looking to amend that clause. Uh, Mayor Ireland, go ahead if you wish. No, that, that is fine. I, I appreciate that response. Um, I need some time to um, to process that additional information and set my mind straight. But thank you very much, Mr. Greathead. Thank you. Councilor McGrath. Just on that, for clarity, Mayor Ireland and Mr. Greathead, are we speaking of uh, 5.1 on the bylaw? from last week's agenda. Perfect, thank you. I have a um, couple of questions. And one is, um, Mr. Greathead, I just want to touch back on Councilor Janot's points because I, I, a little concerned about emphasis on bleeders. And the reason is I, I fear it's a little bit of a rabbit hole. Um, you've stated many times that because we have, um, I think you referenced it as a groundwater system or anyway, it has to do with how we get our water, but our cost of producing water is, is really very minimal. And therefore our cost of supplying water as opposed to um, the connections and so on, the cost of the water is minimal a question whether it's really a concern uh, that that bleeders are really a concern relative to cost to the municipality. I don't really understand how it is that bleeders running represents a cost to the municipality and certainly relative to the potential cost of freeze ops. Isn't it a little bit of a, um, uh, just uh, doesn't it create confusion for us to be talking about bleeders as representing a significant cost to the municipality, just as we don't really factor costs of irrigating municipal lands because that is, um, yes, it's more water, but there isn't really a, a significant and high direct cost to that water itself. Could you clarify that? Tell me if my thinking on that is off base. Deputy Mayor, um, if I, uh... I'm recalling correctly, I believe we uh, gave out $282,000 last year in bleeder credits. Uh, that's not uh, uniform, that's not across the board. We have some properties where um, they have the larger connections and the way our language in our bylaw and this bylaw does need a lot of work in my opinion. Um, you know, some, some um, users are getting a $7,000 credit where their actual bill over the year might only be, you know, six hundred dollars. Um, it, it's just it, it's not it's not uh, reasonable. It's not uniform. Um, so again, we've only been starting to gather the data and find out where all the weaknesses and and um, you know points that we need to correct and address over the system. Um, I do know that there's some some of the properties that uh, would have a bleeder, like a, you know, the the, the tra some of, there's one in the trailer park. Um, he goes through more in his bleeder pro um, on on his bleeder credit per month than he does his entire uh, water usage for the for the whole year, as well as when we're just allowing this treated water to go down into the drain. Um, it's chlorinated water and that affects the process at the end at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, it doesn't have a chance to interact with any, you know, um, 
dishwashing, body washing, anything else that is going to, you know, um, lessen that chlorine demand. So then if we're, if we're coming out at four parts per million, um, right out of the top, that four parts per million uh, water is getting straight into the um, wastewater system and then affecting the treatment as well. So there, there are a lot of concerns um, with the, with the bleeder program, uh, you know, and that's going to take a long time for us to be able to delve into and um, try and get this proper. Uh, it, it is going to be a work in progress as we go forward. Well, thanks. I'll be satisfied to leave that alone for now. But I, I, I do want to make the point that to use your very extreme example, probably, you know, a, an extreme example of a bleeder credit of $7,000. I think it's important to be clear that that does not represent a $7,000 cost to the community. Um, it's lost revenue in one sense, but to charge that revenue for someone that is um, running water through the tap, but they are not using it, um, I think that, that itself would be pretty questionable uh, re revenue gathering. The, and I, I see um, Mr. W Councilor Wilson, but I do wanna ask a question about the request for decision here. Um, I see that you've broken down for us the recommendation of the increase totaling 852,000 into water, sewer, garbage and recycling. And what I would like to know, um, because I, I have been trying to understand the impact on the proposed increase to the, the bills of residents in Jasper, and I, I still can't seem to understand that. So could you help me understand in percentage terms, what kind of percentage increases relative to the current um, revenue do those four numbers represent? And whoever it is, yourself or Ms. Melanchuk, position to answer that. Deputy Mayor, I'd um, defer to uh, Ms. Melanchuk on this one. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm just bringing up my spreadsheet. Bear with me, please. Um, so, for sewer, it is a 27% increase on sewer itself. Um, water is 18%. Garbage is 3%. And Recycling is 26%. And that was a change for a shift in um, um, salaries mostly. Thank you. And those are relative to the 2020 um, incomes, right? Yes, correct. Thank you very much. Councillor Wilson, I think I saw your hand. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I meant to comment on the uh, previous topic, and uh, I, I think that it bleeders are one thing, but water loss throughout the whole system is another, and and uh, water loss at, uh, in our larger users' facilities is is a big thing as well. And I think all of this highlights the benefits of a tiered uh, water use system. So the larger users will start assisting us in finding those those areas of weakness and in, in their own system as well as uh, we can work on our own our, on our on our side, but uh, but really, the, the nobody's like like uh, Mr. Great had had pointed out uh, many meetings ago is that nobody's going to um, investigate their um, their wastage unless it costs them money, and I think this really highlights uh, where this does come into play, and I I think we we got to keep driving towards the tiered system. Uh, of course, uh, may, maybe, um, you know, we're not trying to um, smack the users uh, hard th this year, but we need uh, businesses and, and residents to work with us um, to, to, to find the, the wasted areas where, where and, and, and plug, the, plug the holes, you know, like it, if it costs money, people are gonna find those spots where it's costing them money and, uh, and assist us overall and, and we're doing the same but uh, I think that, that conversation kind of highlighted um, 
why we should be moving toward a tier si tiered system and a, um, a larger cost to big users, but thank you. I agree that um, tiered rates of some sort are likely an important aspect of the future billing uh, schedule. I think it makes sense. However, the tiering that we were presented with um, this past fall isn't something I can support because it, um, while it does effectively increase the income, the revenues in the system, it I think uh, is not equitable because it penalizes the larger users, users far in disproportionately relative to smaller users. I will be in support of a tiering system that um, presents tiers or stepped consumption charges for all users, the small and the large. I think it's really important to remember that a lot of the large users are large users because they are in fact a collective of small users, whether that's a large apartment building with a number of small apartments or a large hotel with a number of hotel rooms. So the community is made up of many, many users and some of them are individually large users, but um, they all consume the services. The example in the trailer park um, um, is at the end of um, kilometers of piping just as is a hotel at the end of kilometers of piping. And the cost of servicing the entire community has to be borne in some fair and equitable way by the entire community. And the reason I haven't been able to be in support of the tiered system that was uh, offered is I just don't think that we have had enough time to explore the ins and outs and the nuances of how we can in a fair way apply that to, to the broad community. Um, it's not a principled objection to stepped or tiered consumptions, but I need to be really sure that it's done in a way that seems equitable. And I'm afraid that for me, the, the introduction of the tiering within the system has just been a little, um, I don't mean to sound glib with this, but it's been a little too much too late um, and in a really difficult year to really get our heads collectively around getting it right, right. And I'm concerned about heading down a road um, of tiering. Yes, we can adjust the model in time, but I think we need to make every effort to get it right in the first place. And I'm happy to have those discussions in 2021, I'm happy to start them in the first week of 2021, but I don't see myself being able to support a bylaw with tiering in it. Um, we have seen just too much um, sense of threat from some of our important large users. Uh, those large users are also the heart of the economy of this community. So we just have to tread carefully. And I'm gonna add to that just for my own feeling that um, I have a really hard time in this year facing all the economic uncertainties we have of um, pushing through, you know, double digit increases to water and sewer. It's too much. We do have to address this, but um, to do so in this particular year is uh, just not palatable to the community. Maybe we have to borrow some money to get on with some of the changes that administration is recommending, but to fund, start that funding process in this year is, uh, as we saw last week with the objections raised, is something that's uh, gonna be hard for the community to find palatable. Sorry, Councillor Demona. I apologize. Uh, actually, Councillor McGrath had her hand up before me. I came in a bit late there. Thanks for that. Uh, sorry, I think I was forgetting to look at my screen for a moment. Uh, Councillor McGrath, go ahead. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Butler. I agree with you. I agree with the sentiments of 
we need to get there. And I understand from administration's perspective where we need to be for sustainability in our community is not where we are right now. And I recognize the importance of making a plan and perhaps a multi-year plan to get where we need to be to fund what we need to fund to create our equity and uh, our utilities to be something of functionality in the future. And I, I understand the hardships and I understand the frustrations um, that staff are probably feeling as we debate this, but this I agree is not the year. And I would recommend along with your recommendation to stay status quo this year, as you mentioned, if we do need to borrow, just like every other organization in the globe has to borrow right now to get through these difficult times, that's what we have to do if that's what we need to do to resume our services at the current function. And we'll find a way through this, but I agree this year, double digit increases is something that I, I simply cannot support. Councillor DeMotta. I just want to say that, uh, you know, I appreciate your comments, uh, Councillor Butler, and, and very well stated. So I, I couldn't have said those things better myself. And, and I really appreciate the uh, insight and uh, the commentary on, on our current situation. Again, I, I, I want to commend administration and operations and, and Mr. Greathead on all these uh, inefficiencies that we're finding. Every rock that uh, we seem to be turning over has exposes some sort of um, financial consequence to the community, but we have to continue uh, turning these rocks over. And I really appreciate the expertise and the drive of administ administration to help us and the community understand more of what we need to be looking at in order to be sustainable in the future. Right now, uh, it is a bit disheartening, but we have to figure out a plan on how we're gonna get out of this together. And the more information we have, the better we can do that. Thank you. Well, I think that we have to task ourselves with coming out of this meeting with some clarity for administration. Uh, I just noted that Councillor Keller, her MP, has uh, joined the meeting. I think I stated at the beginning that we knew Councillor Keller, MP, would be late arriving due to an appointment. Um, but I feel that we have to come up with some clear direction. We have to pass a bylaw. Uh, I think really at uh, in the first week or two of January. So I'm looking for indications from council as to what kind of a bylaw they would find palatable. Councillor Journal. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And I'm trying to support what you're saying is we have to come up with a bylaw. But I, when I reread the agenda item, the recommendation from administration is is on what to present to 21. Uh, good. So the recommendation is council provide direction on the administration what to present. So that's the opening comment. So in other words, they're putting it onto us. And then we go down and so the administration still recommends increase of at least. And then we hear those huge numbers. Uh, I still, uh, when I was first entered as a counselor, it was uh, uh, in my indoctrination or my, my education session, it was told that basically utilities are one. The expenses, the billing is all one. Nothing gets transferred in and out of the budget. And I've seen some transactions here that have gone on. And I, <laughs> I see these huge increases and I, I hear a comment that the 67,000 is to do with salary transfers. Well. I, I'm very unclear as to the package that's being presented to us. If I go back to what I was in, introduced to was that the utilities are one, in other words, the fees that we collect for that. And if we increase, if we want to increase over and above that, the money goes into reserves period for future development. Uh, and it seems we got away from that model and 
Now we're asking for double digit increases. Why? And so I would like to support you, Mr. Chairman, as to, you know, to, to do something, but I can't support these increases without some justification uh, and that no, no comfort that the money is going to go into reserves. Uh, I, I'm very, very confused about the whole aspect. I think we should try and narrow it down. And uh, again, go back to where the money that's raised from the dues are for water sewer utility costs only. Thank you. Well, I'll um, just respond that I, I, I don't wish to disagree and um, maybe I'm preempting something that Mr. Greathead may want to say, but I think the answer has been provided for us um, and that we really need look no further than the infrastructure study that was done and presented in 2017, which pretty clearly demonstrates that we're simply not raising enough money to support our infrastructure over coming years. It's, it really is that simple. Um, we can task administration to show us um, all the bits and pieces and they have to some extent done so what that looks like, but I have no doubt in my mind that we have to raise more money to support our in-ground infrastructure. Our wastewater treatment plant um, is one example. We put through a fairly substantial debenture a couple of years ago, meaning it's money we borrowed to pay for it and we're facing another one. So we do need to raise more money to support our infrastructure. My problem is how to do so in an equitable manner and um, basing it so heavily on a consumption model is something that I really lost comfort with. So I'll just say that for me, the justification is there, but the how of it is a really difficult question. I did see Councillor Keller MP, and then I think I saw Councillor Demota, and then I see Mayor Ireland. So, Councillor Keller MP. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Butler. My apologies for being late. Um, I agree that for our future, we need to increase our utilities. However, with the year that's in it and the year that we're going forward, I feel this is not the year to do it. Um, I still have some qualms about um, the model. Um, I feel it has to be fair and equitable to all. So any users should be paying the same. So whether it's the campgrounds, whether it's being trucked, whether it's outside accommodations, and I know some of them have their own water, but for the sewer side, it all has to be fair and equal. So I'd like to see a model being set up going forward for the future and it may have to be implemented over a couple of years um, to, in order to raise money for our utilities. Um, I agree the study that was conducted in 2017 stated that and for our infrastructure is failing. It's failing throughout the town, it's failing throughout the park. Um, we know that. Um, it's been 20 years since we became municipality. Uh, we, we inherited infrastructures from Parks Canada, you know, it dates back 70 to 100 years, some of it. Um, I think this year we should remain status quo. I'm not opposed that if something breaks, something that we have to take out a debenture and fix it. Um, I think that if we raise um, the utilities 2%, 3% this year, uh, keep it in line with CPI or just put in a 3% flat raise. Um, I think that's the way we should go. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keller MP. Uh, Councillor Journeau, um, I think I maybe, I think you had maybe wanted to respond to my response to you, and I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off if that was the case. So did I, did I miss you? Um, no, that's okay. Uh, no, that's that's fine. Thank you very I, much. I, all right, thank you. I wasn't trying to last word you on that. So, um, I think I have uh, Councillor Demora next. 
No, I was just adjusting my screen. I think you saw my uh, hand go up, but uh, I wasn't uh, wanting to. All right, thank you. Uh, then I think I have Mayor Ireland. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Butler. So I, what I would like to try and do is, is draw us back to um, some direction that we can leave with administration today so that something can be placed in front of us for first and second and potentially third reading on January the 5th. And so it was only um, two weeks ago that um, we passed a motion um, unanimously um, that um, prompted administration or directed administration in fact to, to produce um, the bylaw that we saw last week. So I would like to just go through those elements and find out what has changed and what has not. So two weeks ago, we asked them to bring back a bylaw, which would include a flat consumption rate. Um, so that would be flat rather than, than tiered or progressive. Um, and I, I've heard the arguments today and I, I interpret those arguments um, to not have changed the position of, of council that a flat consumption rate for the time being um, seems to be appropriate. Um, second, that the bylaw generate approximately $750,000 in additional revenue. Um, that seems to have changed based on um, council's consideration of input that it received at the last meeting. So that is an item that could change. Um, that the bylaw include a base rate related to meter size. I haven't heard any discussion about that today. Um, I can say that my mind hasn't changed on that, but um, perhaps other councillors have changed their mind about that. And that council further direct administration to return in the new year with suggestions for moving to a tiered consumption rate for the following year. And that I think is still consistent. Um, there have been arguments about the equity of the proposed tiering rate, but there haven't been arguments in principle against tiering generally. So a direction that we move forward early in the new year, configuring a tiered consumption rate seems to be um, still the desire of council. So it seems to me that Potentially, the only thing that has changed is how much more revenue do we want to generate from a flat consumption rate and deal with tiering next year? If that's the case, what's the amount? Because it seems to me administration has done the work to prepare a bylaw based on our previous direction. The only change is the amount. Let's give them an, an amount and the work will be done. We can get on with that work um, and finalize it early January, after which um, we can then start seeing how that change in utility rates is going to impact the budget. Councillor McGrath. In your question, Mayor Ireland, um, mentioning the base rate as I look at um, schedule one, which I believe is the base rates broken down. If I could ask a question to administration, when I'm looking at say commercial, for example, I see a garbage per year rate. I see a three inch sewer rate, a recycling fee and a water fee, all of which in the per year column you know, I could estimate might be a $4,000 increase um, per annum for a commercial entity. Would I be correct in assuming this or do I need to look at this a different way? Oh, Ms. Malchuk. Um, If I can uh, just have a moment to uh, look at some of my documents. We can come back to that question, please. Sure. Um, and I will take an opportunity to just leap in in response to Mayor Ireland's 
comments and I appreciate them because um, it's, it's the way I'm trying to direct us to come to some decision. I just want to point out that uh, I really appreciate the efforts of administration to meet the mandate we set with that motion. Um, was it now two weeks ago to prepare the bylaw that they did prepare and, and they did exactly as asked. I'm going to also point out that uh, I made that motion. Um, I'm going to also point out that one of the reasons I made that motion is because I felt our conversation was floundering and that we did not have a clear sense of what the increases would look like to the community and what the various models we would look like, how those models would translate for individual users. And one of the things we asked for was for some sample billings. So what would the change look like for small, medium, medium, large, large users? And one of my problems here is I still don't know that. Um, so part of the model that we have been looking at uh, show, showed, I, I referred to tiering, but billing by meter size is another way of tiering rates. And I still have no idea what the impact of, of that change would be on individual users. And I, I can't make a decision without that information. Again, so when I have talked about not being comfortable with tiering or stepped increases, lost comfort with uh, the billing by meter size. Again, I'm comfortable with the principle. I'm prepared to talk about the principle, but the numbers that are in there, I cannot interpret. I do not understand the impact. So if we send administration, if we pass a bylaw that says, well, use that model, albeit with flat consumption rates, and let's say create 10% additional revenues, I don't know what that looks like for individual users because I don't understand the impact of the meter size base rates because I still have, haven't been able to get insight into what that would look like in terms of users' bills. And it's the users that I represent and I, I just can't see a way to move forward. So I don't see a way that we move forward with anything that other than an incremental increase to the current building, building model and then get right on it in January to take the year or coming months to look forward to adjusting the model. There are so many adjustments needed in the model. So many adjustments have been discussed from how we charge Jasper Park Lodge to campgrounds to that I think we need to get it right. And I feel really rushed by this. Um, it's no one's fault, it's just what it is. So I'm, to answer Mayor Ireland's point, I don't have comfort with the meter the base billing based on meter rate because I cannot see what the implications are for individual users. I think I've provided time for Mrs. Melchar to answer Councillor Keller Hernfee's question. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I believe it was Councillor McGrath's question. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I was wondering if I was um, um, not hearing correctly, okay. No, I assure you it's me. <laughs> okay, um, if I'm able to share my screen, I might be able to, sh yes, and I am, I had the message got through, so just one second here. Now, the reason that this wasn't provided on the agenda was because in discussions, we, um, well, with the legislative manager, with Christine Nadon, uh, we came to um, what we thought was that council's last discussions was were surrounded about a percentage increase. That means, that meant to me that the base rate and um, all of that was just removed and that we're going to be talking about it later. So I'd done this up and then we decided that councils actually wanted to discuss the percentage or dollar figure going into 2021 rather than these, um, this as a potential. So that is why it was not included. Um, 
So uh, to show, can everyone see my screen now? If I could get a nod. Yes, okay. So we... uh, for yes. the water and sewer attached to a uh, base rate and a consumption rate to show the $750 additional revenue for water and sewer, we were looking at a change of $34.40 for um, somebody that would use an average of 20 cubic meters for two months. So um, you're looking at just over, well, $17 per month that that, per, um, that household most likely would be paying. Um, and then we've also noted what they'd be additionally paying per year. So all of those charts that were um, given to council in a prior meetings, we're giving those projections of what the possible change could be to those clients. And it was um, broken down by who has the meter size and who and what kind of consumptions they were using and, the, and how they were grouped was just based on the average um, usage by that kind of uh, meter size. So you can see every two months, it changed from 3440 to 664.46 or um, $206.40 for an annual to almost $4,000 um, for the entire year if you were looking at a three inch um, uh, meter size and that consumption rate. Now the estimated, to answer Councillor McGrath's question um, about garbage and recycling. So the first chart here shows you what the increase would be for a commercial, or sorry, a res residential garbage and recycling um, consumer. So you would be looking at a dollar eighty-eight every two months increase, and five forty-nine every two months for recycling, equaling seven thirty-seven. So you might attach that to the thirty-four forty, for instance. And you're looking at about just over $40 increase every two months, so $20 a month. Um, for the commercial users, you'd be looking at an increase of $9.97 every two months um, and for garbage and about $5.50 for recycling, so 15, just over $15. So you would add that on to, say, you're probably looking at your um, meter size from uh, the two inch to the three inch. So you'd be adding that on to your 565 or your 665 every two months. And that is that overview. If I may, Ms. Melanchuk, it's Councillor McGrath here. In relation to this page being up in front of us right now, um, I was simply looking for that bottom number in the middle graph of $3,986.76, um, a rough estimate for our bigger users of about $4,000 increase per year. I was just contemplating base rate in my mind and, and kind of needed to see that difference for the, the high end of the scale once again right. so thank you for bringing this up yes so you're exactly right but that's just for the water and sewer portion so that's why i wanted to show the difference because then there's also the garbage and recycling that's a bit we've been talking about them separately so thank you i will try to unshare here thank you very much uh well maybe um i was just going to suggest that we leave that shared in case counselors have questions um about that specific, but if there aren't any, and, and thank you very much for that, uh, for that explanation that is quite clarifying. Councillor, is anything on that? Uh, do you wish to see that screen shared again? Councillor General? I thought the discussion on meter rate, meter size had been dropped uh, somewhere along the way. I know that certainly, I got that impression and along the way I see it's, it's come back and I bring it up because new construction is required a larger meter size, even if they don't use it. So they required it mostly because of the sprinkler system in the building. So the building I live in, it's got two commercial tenants and four residential tenants would not normally lead two inches, but they do because of the sprinkler system. So 
for us to be charging them is you're going to get some 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 uh, pushback on that and, and most of the new construction and uh, I'm not an expert on the construction. Maybe Councillor Wilson could could uh, provide some some light on that. But I thought that that discussion had been dropped for exactly that reason. Well, I have to say that I thought what I heard from Ms. Melanchuk is that um, she also thought that had been dropped, and that's why this information was not prepared and then was asked for it. So has showed it to us. But my sense is the administration also thought we'd uh, drop that discussion and we ourselves seem to be clear, unclear whether we meant to drop that conversation or not. Mr. Greathead. Deputy Mayor, um, I'm sorry for having thrown this off a little bit. Um, I was really more concerned about preserving the model um, and the work that we've got to at this point, uh, whether, you know, the, that's a discretional council what the actual rates are. So our service model could be set at zeros for this year, um, if that's the will of council. Um, but we did really uh, want to preserve the work we did in getting this model um, prepared. Uh, we believe it's the right model for Jasper to go forward with. And uh, so we would like to, you know, at least, at least have that in principle um, going forward and maintaining that. So. You know that it's absolutely the will of council what those numbers look like um you know we, again just wanted to preserve the model and today we're just looking at the um the rate that council uh feels would be fit uh to uh, um, have this plugged in so that we can come back uh properly prepared for next week or sorry the 5th of january Thanks, Mr. Greathead, and yes, despite my uh, my own objections around the tiering and the meter size base rate, um, I think the model expressed in the bylaw that was presented is um, a really good starting place for the conversations that we have to next have next year, and we absolutely should not throw out that model. But we're still left with the question of what to do today and. I think I'm hearing from council generally willingness to propose or to direct that we essentially extend the model used in 2020 and add some manner of incremental increase to it without imposing tiering or meter based, uh, meter size base rates. So I wonder if we're if that's where we're at, then we can simply proceed with a conversation about a dollar or percentage increase. And I saw nods from Councillor McGrath, from Councillor Kelleher MP. I, I am in favor of approach. I don't know uh, how others stand and please help me to know where to go. I would just suggest that I would support uh, the bylaw as um, presented uh, last week. Thank you. Mayor Arden. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Butler. I, I just um, need to, I think, fully understand um, the proposal, if it is that, um, that you presented, which I, I think is um, the 2020 bylaw with potentially a, a percentage increase to the rates, whatever those rates happen to be. Um, I am inclined um, to support uh, Mr. Greathead's suggestion that the model is important. Um, and I appreciate we could come back to the model and the work is not wasted. He indicated he'd like to preserve the model. Um, that can be done in, in two ways. I would prefer um, to adopt by bylaw in early January, the new model, even if that new model is subject to a zero entry for meter size. And even if that model is subject to the same rates as last year increased by whatever percentage council thinks appropriate. So two or 3%, 
but I think there is um, significance in this council at this time saying that we endorse the model that's been brought forward, even though um, we can't implement at this time um, for various reasons the increased charges that would come either from billing on the meter size or from a tiered rate. But I would like to, at, at an early stage, signify um, confirmation of the model. And I, I think there's a way to do that. I recognize that um, we come back to the discussion in any event, and I hope that if we take a different approach, we will do that. But my inclination is um, not to simply replicate the 2020 bylaw, which I think it, I'm satisfied it has been amply demonstrated that we should change the model. If we can't implement um, increased revenue and we don't want to touch the allocation of the current revenue stream, there are ways to address that. But I, I am still in favor of a change to the base model. I really like and support that suggestion from Mayor Ireland, noting that there is flexibility within that suggestion of keeping the 2020 rates unchanged or, or small incremental increase for 2021 and um, moving forward so that we're planning the future and we're planning the rate change that will drive us in a sustainable manner eventually, but noting and consciously knowing that now is just simply not the time to enact it and bring it forward. Councilor DeMoto. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Butler. Um, I'd just like to, to take us back a couple of steps and uh, comment on our process that we engaged the public in or tried to with cardboard um, and the extent that we went to for public engagement. And when you consider the weight, um, you know, and no pun intended on, on our operations and um, what that means to the community compared to this, I would really like to take some steps as a group and to have a little bit more engagement from our stakeholders. And I said that last time, um, if, if it's not a desire by council or administration to go through these things, I just, I thought that we were starting on a path that we were gonna engage our community um, when it came to things like this and starting with cardboard we, uh, we discovered a, a few uh, pros and cons of that process, and I thought we could get better from that uh, because this is a broader, uh, a bigger discussion and has um, uh, greater um, ramifications. I think that some more engagement with our stakeholders is prudent. And if, it, if the rest of council doesn't feel that way, I'm fine with that. I just thought if we were going to start down a path to do something that we should continue down that path because I thought it was positive. I felt it was a great way to to start getting uh, information and feedback from the community, whether we like to hear it or not. It still provides us with some foundation to make decisions on. That's just my opinion. Thank you for your time. I am. Um agree in principle and in spirit with what Mayor Ireland has suggested about preserving the model. Um, but the devil is in the details. It depends on what aspects of the model we're talking about. I am willing to entertain, talk about, discuss, and ultimately implement some um, base rate tiering based on connection size. Um, but uh, Councillor Janot pointed out a really good reason that we have to have a little closer look at the impact of that. Um, I don't know that any of us were aware that um, 
connection sizes are increasing because of need for sprinkling, which um, I don't know, does that mean it's fair? Because somebody has a sprinkler system, which will never be used, we all would hope uh, that as a, as a result, they should on an ongoing basis over years be paying more. Uh, we have to look at that. We have to be satisfied that it makes sense. So I'm prepared to support the idea of tiering based on meter size. I'm also prepared to support the idea of consumption-based tiering, but not, and absolutely not for me, if it is simply based on the gross flow to a connection. Because again, I keep coming back to the point that if that connection is a connection into an apartment building of 60 residents, well, then we can't look at that as the as being one large user. It is 60 smaller users. users. So we have to really make sure we're being fair with respect to um, consumption, tiered consumption models. So I'm in principle in favor of both of those, but if we're adopting a model without understanding the broad implications, then I start to struggle. But in the spirit of moving this forward, I think I could support using the current model and putting flat rates across the board on the understanding that we're going to continue that conversation. I just don't know that we will have honestly accomplished much by, by doing so, as opposed to just say, increment the 2020 model and stick with it and then begin those conversations. But if that's what it takes, I'm prepared to go along with that suggestion. Casa Keller MP. I'm also prepared to go along with the model. However, I kind of agree with Councillor DeMoto. Like last week, we had the business community um, express that they were prepared to work with us in order to move us forward. They all realized that their tax dollars um, is very important to town. They know that user fee and they agree with that, but they would like to have some input. And I like the idea of if we adopt the model that it could be adjusted, um, that we can have a town hall meeting with the chamber or with the hotel association and get some feedback from them. Um, Nobody, I didn't feel last week that anybody said that down the road they didn't agree with paying their fair share. What they're saying is now is not the time and they are quite willing to work with us. And I think that's an awesome step forward from our business community to say, look, we believe in what you're doing. We want to work with you to achieve this in the future. So I'm quite prepared to to adopt the model, but knowing that we may make adjustments and it should be zero across the board or just with a small increase, but no um, service hookup fees or anything like that for this year. Thank you very much, Councillor Wilson. Um, I could get behind that, uh, Councillor keller but but. I do want to express the fact that we are hanging this on the next uh, um, council. You know, if we're not willing to make these uh, um, these changes now, uh, we can discuss them in, in 2021, but um, we are putting it on the next council to make those hard decisions. And I'm not sure that's fair. Councillor keller -Rimpy. Just from our conversations last week, Councillor Wilson, um, I think at that time when we uh, discussed last week and we debated, I think many of us felt that we don't want to put it on our next council, that we want to adopt as this council uh, plan to move forward to have it set up for the new council to endorse when they come in. We want it ready for that. We're not going to I know I personally don't want to pass this in January and then 
not look at it again. I think this should be right on our third week of Committee of the Whole. We need to get this moving. We need to get it going forward. We need to have this consultation. And by May, we as a council should be saying, this is the model that we believe in. Have it ready for the next council for them to adopt, or we can adopt it as council for going forward. Thank you very much. I agree with both of the things that uh, thoughts that have been raised here. Um, what we do today, no matter what we do today, we need to make sure that we're creating opportunities for input. Um, I think that we could, for example, ask administration when we begin to develop a model to ask administration to um, put out a communication that allows an individual user to calculate what the change would look like for them. They can look at their previous water bills. They can say, okay, what would this change mean to me? We need to put people in that position. And I don't think we should leave this for the next council. Um, I think that we should adopt a revised model in the coming year. If new council doesn't like it, I guess they can overturn it. But I think that uh, I really agree with Councilor Wilson that we, we can't simply put this off and leave it to the next council. It's certainly not what I'm proposing to do. I just think we need to, we need a few months, a couple of months even to discuss this. Um, the very few weeks we've had since this was initially presented just hasn't been enough time and it's um, the year is a really sensitive one. All right, so I'm gonna to sum up and I'm gonna call a short break and we can come back to this. But I think that where we're at is with some consensus that we would adopt a bylaw, pass a bylaw with essentially the model presented by administration, but with no increases across the connection size line and across the consumption line so that we are giving clear indication to the community of our intent to go to a system containing two elements of tiering being connection size and being consumption. And I'd like to think that we have some consensus toward that and that coming back after a short break, we can proceed with a conversation around what kind of revenue increase we would be looking at. And I've heard everything from zero to 27 percent so um let's agree to come back and try to settle that conversation so please tell me by nodding or thumb upping or something whether i've um described the consensus that we have reached at this point some nods some not so sure I am going to go ahead and uh, call a five minute break because we've been here for an hour and a half and we'll come back to this conversation at um, 11.10. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor Ireland let me know that his screen was freezing up. Um, he was having maybe some internet issues, there do seem to be some internet issues today, and asked me to attempt to summarize again where I believe that we are at by consensus. And that is that I believe I've heard consensus or enough consensus from council to suggest that administration bring back um, essentially the previous iteration of the bylaw, but with uh, no showing the tiering model, but without uh, changed amounts in the tiering. So essentially we would zero out all of the stepped and tiered amounts, including the base rate and including consumption rate, so that we can make a clear statement that we are moving in the direction of a tiered model that might help with uh, the concern of leaving this to next council. And then that should leave us with the conversation here now of what would be either in percentage or dollar amounts, the increase over the 2020 income from utility buildings that uh, we would be prepared to pass. 
So that is where I think we were at. And then I had asked for sort of nods to confirm that we have at least that degree of consensus. And could I just ask for a reconfirmation of that? Or if you're not comfortable that I move us on to, well, what's the percentage amount of uh, revenue change, then please speak up. So one of the people I didn't see a nod from before was Mayor Ireland because he's frozen. So I have that now. All right, so I'm gonna move us to uh, uh, Councillor Journal, please go ahead. So in all your summation, we have suggested- Councillor Journal, I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Oh, uh, technology. We can hear, it's just very, very quiet. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, in all the summation here, I haven't heard of any recommended or suggested percentage increase. Have we not talked about that? We talked about CPI earlier, a week in the sun. I, sorry, I mean to cut you off, but what I'm trying to confirm is that now we're, we're ready to have that conversation, having agreed on what sort of a model we'll go forward with. Okay, thank you. So if that's our direction, and I think that it is, then we need to turn our conversation to a um, dollar or percentage amount. This uh, corresponds with the options in the RFD to either direct a set percentage increase over the 2020 levy or direct a set dollar amount over the 2020 levy. Administration has suggested that they're comfortable with either of those approaches. And on the third point, delay approval of a new bylaw, I think we have, and this is the wish of administration, we have decided that we will not delay approval of a new bylaw. We will adopt a new bylaw and essentially zero out the tiering and stepped increases. So do we have some thoughts on a percentage or dollar increase over and above the 2020 revenue number? Councillor McGrath. I'm wondering if Ms. Malinchuk could provide us with the information needed um, to say what a, say a 2% increase might be in a dollar value. Uh, yes, that is um, possible. I would like to also mention, um, I can go over the percentage and what it would equate to um, off of the full amount um, that would be levied um, for water, sewer, garbage, and recycling. Um, I would like to draw attention to uh, the debenture schedule that was asked for from Councillor Butler um, in a prior meeting. And uh, that being said is that if you look at that, there's also a consideration of what would be needed going forward in debenture alone. Um, and then any other um, dollar figure or percentage figure would then also be considered for reserves as well as an additional, not additional, but any kind of uh, staffing incremental changes. Um, so I have my spreadsheet up and a 2% equates. $94,451 off of 2020. Council McGrath, go ahead. And further to that, Ms. Malinchuk, what amount of that is debenture payments? Um, on the debenture schedule, if you go to the agenda package, it would be the full amount. It's not enough to cover six months of payments in the sewer that we uh, wastewater treatment um, plan to venture um, going forward. 
<clears throat> so that is, I'm just trying to find now my agenda. If you look at uh, page, it ended up being on the last page of the agenda. And to give you some context, what I did was I included where we were January 1st of 2020 and on a second to last page, sorry, um, and what we were paying for 2020 and what we would be paying for 2021 and so on. And then I also gave a projection into three years of um, added debentures past that. So on the last page, you can see it includes 21 um, uh, year for wastewater treatment plant. Um, there's three of them uh, for the rec center. And then we go into the wastewater treatment pl plan, which would be an addition in 2021. Um, <clears throat> There's a rec addition in 2021. However, no additional dollars to be paid in 2021 because the um, debenture wouldn't be taken out until the end of the year. And the wastewater treatment plant in 2023 would be added on in 2023. So if you look at the wastewater treatment plant 21 column, you can see that there would be an additional payment of nearly $84,000 in principal and $23,320 in interest payments in the first six months. So that would be taking it out uh, June or July of 2021. And I had to reduce it and plan and see if it would work out for us to take a debenture out later in the year um, because of the amount that was, we were initially talking about 1.1 uh, 1 .1 million dollars of additional dollars needed and council gave a direction of 750. So that was one way I was able to reduce it. Um, and so that equates to um, together, you're looking at, just over $107,000 for the debenture loan. So that's why when we started all of these conversations last week about a percentage increase, that it also affects the capital going forward. It affects the operating going forward. So all of this, so that's why we just decided to bring back this conversation about utilities first, because it, it, it impacts ultimately a lot of things going forward. Well, councillors, um, I'm at a bit of a loss, Councillor McGrath. For us to be able to cover the debenture alone at $107,000, would that bring this up to maybe 2.3% or something along that number that would help us cover our costs without having to incur more debt to just see our operations um, still happen and move forward? Yes, you are correct. Um, that would just be the debenture, so no other reserve transfers or anything. How does council feel about starting a conversation around that 2.3%? Councillor Jarneau, are you waiting? Yes. Yes, uh, thank Go you, ahead. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, so I, I, I'm supporting Councilor McGrath in suggesting a, a, a rate 2.3 percent. My question would be, is that I'm still unclear as to whether or not this is 
to do with the cost of operating or are we trying to transfer money into the operating budget? In other words, and secondly, this, I would prefer to increase more if we were to put money in reserves, but the reserves dedicated to the utilities, are not, reserve, not overall reserves, just, so in other words, keep all the accounting for utilities separate. So uh, the 2.3% is, is a starting point. I, and I thank Councillor McGrath for that. But my question would be that, does that allow us, because Councillor McGrath did question, does this make payments to the debenture? Well, the debenture reserves are kind of outside of the day-to-day -day operation. So I would like to see us either for sure cover the debenture payment, but uh, you know, even consider some reserves. Uh, Deputy Mayor, may I comment to that? Yes, please do. Um, so the, I just want to be clear that anything that is discussed within utilities. So if we're talking reserves within utilities, it is covered by utilities. There's no other, um, you know, it's not done through the tax part of the bill. We're talking about water, sewer, garbage and recycling here. So anything that is um, added into reserves through utilities, that's how it would only go to the utility reserves. That's what we do. Um, and um, if I, I just want to be clear too that it, the additional debenture that we'd be looking at in 2021 represents some of the capital needs in 2021. So this is a new debenture payment that we'd be looking at. So you can see that coming on board in 2021. Just want to be clear about that. So that is um, ultimately more decisions for council to be making going down the road with capital and what needs to occur. There's a, a lot on the um, plan for the, tw the sewer um, portion of the capital budget going forward. So that's why we're looking at that. There is not enough money in the reserves to be clear. Councillor Kalahrampi. How about a three and a half percent raise that would cover the debentures and put some money into reserves um, for this year? Thank you. I think that I want to clarify my understanding the conversation about putting money into reserves i i there has been a certain amount of uh i would say some pushback in the community against the idea of using either taxes or utility billings right now to build reserves um, i think i would be correct in saying that um subject to what we might pass in the actual budget that with any of these kind of increases we are not building reserves we transfer money into reserves to support current and ongoing capital um, projects, but um, it's tempting to think of reserves for people to see reserves as a, a sort of a savings program. They can be, but uh, I don't think any of the increases we're looking at here would in any way see us come out of this year with increased reserves. This is not a savings program. This is a survival program. Correct me if I'm wrong in that, but um, we're in no position to build reserves. Ms. Malinchuk, maybe you could confirm that I'm correct, that when we're talking about putting money in the reserves, we would probably empty those out just in the course of doing business, if not on the operate, or on the capital side in the coming year. It'd be quite easy to deplete the reserves um, going forward. Um, there's, um, with given um, what we're looking at at the next five years, um, that's why we were trying to set up the reserves a bit better um, in if we are not able to add more to the reserves this year, then we, I will have to look at the capital uh, um, in a, a much deeper level and try to remove, I guess, some, um, even though they are well overdue. Um, but yes, we, we will not be able to 
get the projects done that we need to um, with the reserves that we have at the moment. Thank you. I would support Councillor Keller and RP's suggestion, which I think was three and a half percent. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Butler. I, I too would um, would approve that. Um, on my poor math, I think it's about one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars that that would generate. So one hundred and seven for debenture and a little bit more um, to guard against um, the almost certainty of some sort of failure in the system, um, given its its age and um, condition. So I would support that. I, I'm just curious, though, whether Council is intending to apply one percentage amount to all items of utilities. Our, our discussion has focused principally on um, water and sewer. Um, there are different proposed rates for um, garbage and for recycling. And I'm just a question to council, are we anticipating that it is um, to be a direction that one um, percentage increase apply to all fees or do we wish to enter into any discussion about whether there should be a different percentage factor for either garbage or recycling? Sorry, Councillor Keller Empey, then McGrath, then Demoto. I, I was proposing the three and a half percent across the board, Mayor Ireland, um, for all of our utilities. I support a three and a half percent increase as suggested by Councillor Keller Empey. Um, I do also not have very many concerns or reservations around the schedule increase that was presented by administration for garbage and recycling, noting that the, the high end of that increase would be $15 every two months. And, and that's something that I believe um, most of us can endure, um, that it's not too significant or too dramatic of an increase for this year. But certainly if the intention is three and a half across the board, I, I support that. Councillor Demoto. Um, I'm good now. Thank you. So I have heard four in favor of going that route. I think that I that's so five have said so in my straw voting thumbs up protocol that would be enough to pass a bylaw. I do not want to task administration to come with a bylaw that could fail. So I don't mean to put us on the spot of making a formal decision in the committee of the whole, but I am interested in reducing pain and suffering on the part of administration here. Councilor Demota. Well, yeah, and, and thank you for bringing that up. I, I know that when uh, Ms. Malinchuk was uh, going through the percentage increases for every category, uh, the ones that stood out uh, were the uh, sewer and recycling because there were, I believe recycling was 26% and sewer was 27. And garbage is only at a 3% increase. I'm just curious to the recycling and because uh, like the Mayor had mentioned we we've only been focusing on on water and sewer. Like, um, what kind of impacts would the small increase mean to recycling? I know that we've made some strides there, and and what kind of implications would we have not only fiscally, sorry, not fiscally, uh, physically and uh, operationally. Maybe that would be directed towards Mr. Greathead. Mr. Greathead, go ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, to speak to this, uh, one thing uh, Council should consider uh, when we're talking about the garbage rates is our tipping fees at the uh, West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority operated landfill in Hinton has gone up 10% this year. 
Um, so that uh, merits some consideration. I don't think three and a half percent will cover it. Um, for the um, uh, for the uh, garbage and the proposed rates and increase, I know it, it seems exceptionally high within recycling, um, but that's just true of what's going on in the markets right now. I've mentioned at council that we've always had a um, uh, made money off of our uh, materials, and right now we're actually having to sign credit applications per load of cardboard uh, that gets trucked down to Washington uh, because they don't know what the value is going to be when it hits the, uh, the processor. And uh, so that's been hard for us to speculate, but we, our revenue streams are, are drying up really, like it was, it, I know that there's the um, understanding or the belief that recycling um, is a self-funding and self-sustaining um, operation. And that it's not the case anymore, um, especially without the uh, federal and uh, provincial uh, grant supports that, there, that were in place at one point. Um, we have reduced our staffing uh, within the solid waste and recycling department. So um, we're not at the capacity we were at uh, last year. And that's just shaped by the changing of some of our streams and um, just trying to make sure uh, we're working as efficiently as possible. So that, that um, merits some consideration. Um, I don't have a recommendation on this, but I would, I would um, say that three and a half percent we can get us by on the water and sewer and that is just getting us by but for the um garbage and recycling um i would i would recommend at least a five percent on those two line items of an increase otherwise we will just end up running a deficit uh and that will affect the rest of our operations Councilor McGrath. Mr. Greathead, the chart that was screen shared with us by Ms. Malinchuk had um, garbage and recycling at the bottom. What rate, what percentage was that indicative of? Councilor McGrath, I wrote it down here. Garbage was 3% and recycling was 26%. If I might speak to this as well, Deputy. Please. Um, I'd just like to also um, bring back the context of the percentage is based on when we're talking about, for instance, um, an increase in recycling. Well, the, the levy that we're increasing on is substantially lower than what would be so a dollar value when we're looking at that compared to, um, say, a dollar value placed against a levy within water or sewer. Thank you. Right, so we do have a suggestion on the table um, that we look at a three and a half percent across the board. And we have Mr. Greathead's suggestion that looking at a uh, increase of 5% on garbage and recycling would be advisable. Councillor keller -Empey. Sorry, um, I could support three and a half percent on sewer and water and June five percent on the utility or on the recycling. Um, if we have committed to our regional partnership for that increase with the, um, then I think we need to support that. I don't feel that we should go in a deficit um, for that portion. So if 5% covers that, then I would um, be in favor of doing 5% uh, for the recycling and sewer and water at three and a half. Councillor keller Empey, did you mean, uh, when you were referencing the 5% recycling, did you mean also to include garbage? You did, all right, thank you.
Councilor Butler, you were muted. Sorry, I, I think I was muted. Mayor Ireland, followed by Councilor Journal. Thank you, Deputy uh, Mayor Butler, and, and I thank uh, Councilor Keller uh, I lobbed the grenade, so I, I should I should come out of the foxhole, but I, I do appreciate that, and I particularly appreciate uh, Mr. Greathead's comments, um, and I would support um, that slight amendment to the direction. So three and a half percent for um, water and sewer utility and 5% for solid waste. So including garbage and recycling. And even at that, it seems to me that we are continually losing ground. Uh, the 5% um, will not reflect the increased fixed costs to which we are subject. Um, but it is a step in the right direction. And it also shows sensitivity to um, the plight of, of so many of our taxpayers who are, are going to struggle with any payments, but um, balancing all the realities, uh, I, I would support um, that suggestion by Councillor keller for a 5% for solid waste and 3.5% for sewer and water. Right, and I also will support that. Uh, Councillor DeMota, I see you nodding your head. So I think that with that, um, I was considering whether we should have a motion to recommend. We can actually do that, but I don't want to over formalize. We could in, in um, committee, we could pass a motion to recommend that council approve a uh, bylaw that looks like what we have discussed here, but um, unless any councillors here wishes to take that, wish me to take that additional step. I think that we have assembled adequate direction to move forward. I point out that I really wanna echo what Mayor Ireland just pointed out that this is not even close to being enough, nor even close to being the kind of increases that we are going to have to face in coming years whether it's through the tax base or through the utilities buildings to address our infrastructure deficit. We need to think of this as being an infrastructure deficit. It's a deficit that just hasn't become a financial one yet, but it is an infrastructure deficit. And honestly, I hope the community is listening when we're saying that. So I think that we, uh, successful, we've successfully provided adequate direction. I will just ask Mr. Greathead and Ms. Melanchuk whether uh, you have what you need to prepare a bylaw that should succeed in passing three readings in early January. Deputy Mayor, if I can ask Ms. Melanchuk, um, if I... I, I quite clear um council i'm just gonna have his mouth check because she was going to be off on holidays this week uh she just didn't want me to uh uh come into this meeting and support it on on the discussion so mr great have you froze up there a little bit i think you're asking Ms. melanchuk to just confirm that we've given adequate direction albeit albeit inadequate money but adequate direction. I believe so. Um, All right. Ash, are you there? Yes, uh, Deputy Mayor, I think you put it perfectly at the, at the end. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much, Council. Um, one difficult conversation dispensed with, then we will move to item 8.2, the operating budget discussion. We have an attachment. Um, I don't know if administration would like to make some opening comments here from either Mr. Greathead or Ms. Malinchuk. Please uh, go ahead if you would like. Deputy Mayor, um, I believe this was requested to be brought onto the agenda by council. Um, the service level packages with the operating um, budget summary, um, focusing on the 2019. So it's just coming back on the table um, for council 
to see and maybe have discussions on. Um, I know that it was a request and uh, we needed, administration needed more so to move for, through the utility side um, to um, make sure that we had enough to get the year started, um, given that we're in an interim position on based on the 2020 years um, year, uh, we will need to have uh, further discussions on the operating budget and the capital budget early in January to um, to move forward so that we're we're making sure that we're operating at um, a sufficient level for 2021. Um, and that just opens up the table, I guess, for Council to consider um, the service levels, given um, that we are potentially looking at increases in our operating budget going into 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Melanchuk. So, Council, we did, um, of course, at our last regular meeting, pass a uh, interim operating budget based on the 2020 operating budget, which has given administration at least the freedom to continue operations into 2021. We still have major decisions to make on the operating budget. The one of the, if not the primary component of that decision will need to be what is the tax requisition going to be for 2021. We had given direction earlier on this fall that administration um, prepare a draft budget on the assumption of an $8.4 million tax requisition. And I think that that is still where the conversation on the tax requisition stands while we have not, um, of course, taken any formal measures in that direction. Beyond that, obviously, even once the tax requisition is set, we are likely to be faced with conversations around some service reductions because we have absolutely reduced the overall budget package by reducing um, by about $700,000 or something, the allocation obtained from the utilities billing. So that's where we're at. We have an, any particular, our, any particular goal stated for ourselves with this conversation. We can do anything from push the whole thing off into the new year to beginning or advancing conversations on the tax requisition or any other aspects of the budget. So I am open to any comments, questions or statements from councillors. Councillor McGrath. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Butler. I have an intention on Finding a way through this where administration still has the $8.4 million budget to operate from, um, recognizing that expenses will be reduced responsibly as we operate the organization, but find a way through it, perhaps through some options presented to us on January 5th on where that $1.4 million comes from and perhaps it's from reserves, perhaps it's from debenture and we can have discussions around how we get there and what options are available to us on moving to a sustainable budget that does not dictate a reduction in service levels because we know how that affected our community with that being a possibility this year and it was detrimental to community health. But how we move in this direction at the same time is not putting the sole burden on our, our taxpayers and, and perhaps passing a budget of $8.4 million now or January 5th, but then come the spring talking about that, that tax levy and how we achieve passing that bylaw. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Butler, and through you to um, 
Councillor McGrath, well, I support in principle that approach and I too am looking for a way to um, approve a budget in about that, that amount of tax requisition. But one of the reasons I was happy to have the budget discussion on our agenda for today is to say specifically from my perspective that I want absolutely nothing from administration on January 5th. I think all of our staff and um, none more so than Mrs. Melanchuk deserve a Christmas holiday and to request anything for the first meeting in January when we have already approved um, an interim operating budget to allow um, operations to continue is, is just unnecessary. So I, I think we should use this opportunity um, to sort ourselves out, um, understand where we want to go and give instruction to administration um, not sooner than um, about the end of January to come back with this. I, I think they need a break. Uh, I think they absolutely deserve a break and we can manage that now because of, of the motion that we made last week. So I, I do agree that I have been um, interested in finding a way as Councillor McGrath suggests um, to do this in a sustainable way and I think we can find that. But I prefer to see no additional pressure put on administration at this time. Um, there will be enough work remaining with respect to um, the utility rate bylaw to keep them busy over the Christmas break. And that is all that I think we should expect of them. Thank you. I see nods around the table on that, sir. Councillor Wilson. Sorry, uh, just to speak to Councillor McGrath's uh, comments earlier, um, I'm completely opposed to that. Uh, I feel that if we're gonna uh, cut taxes, the services of the current taxpayer should be cut. Uh, I, 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 there's no way that I would support borrowing money um, going into a debenture, uh, going into reserves uh, to, to, to offer services to the taxpayer who aren't, uh, who, who we're going to give a, a break on taxes. That, that's completely against what, what I feel we should be doing here. Like, so you get both things, you get all the services, but you also get the break in taxes and then the future taxpayers uh, pay for it in the end. I, that is, I feel wrong. Councillor Dumont. Uh, bravo to you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for those comments uh, regarding administration and giving them a break. I think that was a, uh, well, was well received by me, hopefully more well received by them. Um, I do have some uh, thoughts on going forward and it's just things to contemplate. Um, you know, we have to think about uh, what assessments might look like. Um, and I know that, you know, there are certain areas that rotate every five years, but, you know, with, with the potential of some commercial properties, um, you know, based on income, having uh, direct impacts over the, you know, uh, this two year cycle and possibly going into 2022, 23, um, how that's going to affect our, our requisition as well. And I think that we have to consider you know, looking at uh, reducing some services in that. And, you know, we've had some um, communications come in from different agencies and expressing that, you know, maybe we should be cutting back taxes and this isn't the year and if we have to borrow. Um, I'm sort of on the same uh, wavelength as, as Councillor Wilson on having, a, you know, future taxpayers make up for the burden, but at the same time, um, you know, when you have the commercial properties that have voice that maybe if we we scrimp a little now and then try to make up for it in the in the long run somewhere else, like everybody realizes we got to pay for what we have, and uh, you know the taxpayers of today of twenty twenty and twenty twenty one aren't going to be that different. Um, 
you know, going forward in 2022 and 23, um, we're going to have a different council for sure. But uh, I don't think that, you know, the, the people of today are going to be that much different than tomorrow. So we have to strategically kind of stage how we're going to provide what we need and, you know, the nice to haves in, in the community, right? Last year we went without flowers, our, uh, our, our green spaces took a little bit of a hit and that uh, we can't continue to hammer them in, in that way. So, um, you know, we're lucky that maybe in the sense that we're not having a lot of uh, outdoor sport activities on our pitches and things like that. So, you know, we still have to maintain those things, but as far as our overall aesthetics and cleanliness in the community, those, those needs, those need to be looked at and where we find the money and how we do it. It's going to be, uh, it's going to need a creative touch from council. Thank you, Councillor Kellerempi. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Ireland, for your comments. And I'd like to wish the staff a great Christmas. And I agree they need a break. And I agree with both Councillor McGraw and both Councillor Wilson. I believe that we need to have a budget where we have enough money to run. However, I think we need to look at our user fees. If more money, like I was looking at, um, just for an example, I was looking at, um, the, I think it was 23,000 or something dollars extra for daycare. Well, I worked it out for how many families on that day and it was something like $52 a month per family. Well, you know what? It's a user fee. Um, they will have to pay it. Um, again, you know, with our arena, outside groups, up the fee, you know, I thought it was very interesting last week when um, the Chamber of Commerce presented and they um, said like um, a company from the outside coming in to do work in, and if they use Fort McMurray as an example, if you're an outside company coming in to do work, your business license with it was $800 where ours is the same as our normal business. So I think as a council, we do have to look at our user fees, what's good for our community, what's good for um, our businesses and residents. So I think we have a lot of work to do in January uh, when we come back after the break. And again, you know, I'm looking again, like, you know, as Councillor Wilson had indicated earlier in the year, there's no way we're gonna do uh, summer camps this year. And I don't think we ever should have people in the bottom of our basement of the activity center again. So I think I need our uh, budget as we go forward needs to be adjusted. Thank you very much. Um, I'll make a few comments. I, I agree with Councillor Wilson that um, we, I don't think we can try to have our cake and eat it too, and nor should we uh, lead our community in that direction. Uh, these are really difficult times. If we're not prepared to impose um, the necessary tax requisition to maintain services at, I think what we often talk about as 2019 levels, if we're not prepared to impose that tax requisition, then we have to impose savings reductions. To do anything else, uh, would be irresponsible. Uh, nobody uh, in your business, in your family, or anywhere uh, tries to have it both ways. To do so is to run up your credit card debt, and we need to be very cautious. I'm not saying I'm averse to any debt to get us through this period, but um, we're already incurring debt because of, I don't know, sort of a perfect storm of infrastructure issues which we face concurrently with this pandemic. You know, we decided uh, on last year's budget to reduce the tax requisition compared to 2019 levels by $907,000 and really round numbers close to a million dollars. And we did that for two reasons, I, I feel. I think one of the reasons was because we had great concern about the ability of the taxpayers to pay. And that concern has been borne out. Um, on the one hand, we, um, I suppose, didn't have as bad a uh, summer tourist season as we feared we might. 
but now we're facing clearly a second year of real restraint. So we took a million dollars out, but then we put nearly $400,000 back in, um, essentially by drawing on reserves. Um, some of that will be able to be covered by most funding. But my observation is that um, in, in respect of the goal of cutting the budget in order to save money, we were successful to about um, maybe something like half of what we had hoped. Uh, what we discovered is the community really simply wasn't prepared to endure the kind of service reductions that would have saved that full amount of money. And fair enough, that's what we discovered. And so to consider going into the next year with something like the 2020 tax requisition of $7 million, I think um, would impose hardships on the community that I just don't think the community is prepared to endure. So I think we have to look at increasing the tax requisition. So my thinking is in really rough numbers, I feel like, as I said, that we were able to reduce our expenses by something like half of that amount. If we were to raise the tax requisition this year to where it is currently proposed, in a sense, we would be absorbing half of the 2020 increase over two years. If we go with a 2019-like tax requisition, it's still a approximately 4%, uh, sorry, the 20, 2019 plus cost of living increases, it's still approximately four or something percent on average over two years lower than 2019. So something in that neighborhood is where we left the conversation. And I think something in that neighborhood is where we probably need to consider. Maybe we need to reduce it somewhat, but no matter what we do, no matter what the tax requisition is, I think it is only responsible that we face the reality of some service reductions. I just don't know how we think we can go forward over the next several years of recovery and, you know, have everything as we, as we felt should. So those are hard conversations, but it's why we're here. And I think we're going to have to face the reality of some service reductions. And it's not fair to tell administration or ask administration to tell us where those reductions should occur we've acknowledged that we have to shoulder those conversations. And I wanna make one more final point, and I do see your hand, Councillor Demota. Um, and that is this, there's another way uh, that we can help the taxpayers that are gonna have difficulty paying their 2021 taxes. Um, I am very concerned about some taxpayers will be in a position to pay, others won't. We can't, we just can't make our decision based on what we know is going to be some real difficulties with a few businesses. But we can offer really extensive, and I think we should offer really extensive tax deferral options. And I think that's a conversation we should lead ourselves into quite soon. I think uh, we can offer a lot of relief by offering lengthy tax deferrals, even if that pushes us into having to borrow. But at least we're borrowing and uh, passing, we would be passing those borrowing costs onto those who are struggling to pay, but giving them a few years to catch up if that is what needed is needed. And I think that that is a way that we can offer some comfort to the businesses and residents that really may find themselves unable to pay their taxes in 2021. So I just wanted to put that last piece on the table as something to be talked about. Sorry for going on so long, but as chair, I don't like to uh, jump in too often. So I've said my piece. Councilor DeMoto. Uh, thank you for recognizing that I had my hand up for so long. I think, uh, yeah, I'm just getting the blood back into it. So. <laughs> Okay, uh, I had to add some levity there. Um, okay, so having conversations with some uh, business uh, operators in the community, um, we have to consider where the money is going to come from. We heard from the hotel sector, which contributes to a large portion of our commercial requisition that they took a 50% hit this year up to. And uh, talking to many of them, uh, not just the small operators, that uh, 
a lot of them are loaned out to the max and they're relying on us to be creative with our budget this year. We're not going to have a 2019 season. Um, it's going to look more like 2020. Um, we have to also consider that our largest campground outside our community is going to be reopened. So um, probably more people in the community this summer coming up and, you know, our, our heavy visitation period. Um, and if we face the same hotel rooms, we've only got Canada to entertain and maybe just Albertans come around the corner. We don't know how we're going to roll out of this thing. It could be better than last year. It could be worse. But, uh, you know, with the, with the campground, our community is going to take a little bit more of an infrastructure. hit. We saw what happened with uh, garbage collection and, and all sorts of, um, you know, different things happening in the community because uh, people were either traveling through here during the day and not staying here or just not being used to being in a, in a resort municipality. And we might see more of that, uh, particularly with our uh, campers visiting our community. So where are we going to get the money to have uh, a 2019 budget alone? Um, I just, I mean, it, it's going to be tough to really consider even borrowing money. So, you know, we made some cuts for, for 2020. Uh, I, I know that in, in some sectors, uh, they're encouraging us to, to look at making similar cuts. So, you know, we have to think about those things. Are we going to have another summer without flowers? Are we going to have another summer with uh, mitigated uh, street cleaning, things like that. And that's just on the surface. Um, you know, then we go into all the other operations and those discussions that we had. Um, there were valve issues, uh, water supply issues, and things like that. So um, there's going to be a lot of tough decisions, but there's more to consider than just doing what we did in 2019 and applying fixed costs to that. And uh, I, I think we have to really contemplate what the bigger cost is and where the money is going to come from. Because if, if hotels were talking that they lost 50% and they're tapped out now, it's going to be even worse going forward next winter. If we don't recover any of what um, they say their losses are going to be, then we're going to be, it's going to be Groundhog Day for us. Thank you. Thank you. I think I saw Councilor McGrath, did I? No. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Butler. I, I want to go back to um, your earlier comment, um, which I, I fully endorse, and that is if we are going to make budget cuts, um, they are in fact service cuts, cuts, and that is uniquely the responsibility of council, not administration. So we will have to engage in those difficult decisions. And I'm proposing that we do that um, early in the new year. But just to put on the table some, some thoughts that I have, um, Councillor Demota asks where the money is going to come from. Um, and yet in, in recent meetings, um, there has been much discussion about the most money. And it is difficult um, to know how we might be positioned um, in the future. But it seems to me that we are struggling now um, to some extent with identifying um, losses that can be covered by the most funding because in fact, we so reduced our budget. Um, and so a, a budget is just a planning tool. It's not necessarily a spending document. I, I think we have to budget realistically um, at the end of the year, um, we can, and I, I agree with Councillor Rutler that um, we can offer more um, extensive tax deferrals, but we've also heard that deferral is not the answer for some. And I go back to comments that I made in the spring. We can, um, under section, I think it's 347 of the Municipal Government Act, also cancel taxes either for uh, individual taxpayers or classes of property or <clears throat> sectors of taxpayers. 
And if we come to that, maybe we have to do that. Um, but maybe then that is a loss that we can more easily document to get access to funding from other levels of government because that support does seem to be there and it came last mm -hmm. to municipalities, but it has materialized. And of course I can't read the future, but it is likely, I think that it will materialize again. So I say, let's build a realistic budget knowing that there will be circumstances that prevent us from spending in some areas anyway. So summer camps, for example, uh, they probably won't be allowed. Perhaps they will be. We don't know. There's much that we don't know. So we save where we can, but budget for what we we anticipate we might have to do. And at the end of the year, after all the deferrals, if taxpayers come to us and say they need a break, we can consider that on a case by case basis or on a sector by sector basis or a property class basis if we choose to do that. And then we can document um, our losses. If we are left to borrow to cover those, so be it. But we might also have better opportunities to access other funding. And it occurs to me that one of the issues that we hear about repeatedly is rent. And yet when we have heard um, as we did last week from the chamber and from the hotel association, there's no mention of the rent that we as a community pay. And yet that amounts to 9% approximately of our municipal tax requisition. Last year, we got some relief. Uh, Mrs. Melanchuk can confirm, but I think we got, we saved 75% of 25% um, on an annual basis of our, of our land rent. Um, that, is, that is such a significant portion of our municipal tax levy. Um, I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to reduce that, maybe to eliminate it. And I would welcome the support of those who wrote letters last week to focus on that particular expense that we as a municipality incur with only one other municipality in the entire country. Um, we are well positioned, I think, to, to take up that, that quest once again with the federal government and perhaps eliminate that. And that would be an enormous saving for all of our taxpayers. So there are, there are in, in an odd way, some opportunities presented um, by this difficult situation. And that is one. So I think we should look at, at all of the options that might be available to us to reduce our own expenses and to give relief to taxpayers at the end of the day. We, we heard last year and it, it stings um, personally that, that we might be responsible for um, bankruptcies on an individual basis in the community. Again, um, if an individual taxpayer is in that position, they are welcome to approach council to ask for tax forgiveness. If our municipal taxes mean the difference between bankruptcy and survival, I am absolutely prepared to hear those cases and grant relief where we can. The other thing that strikes me, and I, I'm sorry if this is now turned into a rant, but we are, we are so well aware, particularly as municipal elected politicians, that the evidence is absolutely clear that of every single tax dollar paid in this country, 50 cents goes to the federal government 42 cents goes to the provincial government and only eight cents on every dollar goes to municipal government, which in fact provides the services that our residents use every day. If that 8% is the difference between survival and um, ruin for a business, I would be surprised, but I am certainly prepared to look at that on a case by case basis. So I think we have options. Um, we have to assign ourselves the task of looking at these difficult decisions, leave staff out of it for the time being, set our own course, and then move forward. But I think that there are options. And I do apologize for my rant. Sorry, thank you very much, Mayor Ireland. Um, I'm hoping you went on longer than I did. It made me feel better, but I'm not sure that you really did. Councilor Demota. Well, I didn't consider that a rant and it was uh, quite welcome by me anyway. And it could have gone longer as far as I'm concerned because 
there was a lot of good stuff that came out of that um, self-proclaimed rep. Um, mine was more like a pedantic diatribe uh, in comparison, but I, I really do support that. And, uh, you know, having said that, if, uh, if we have a, an auto payment going through for our uh, land rent to the federal government, I would suggest putting a, a, a stop on that for the time being <laughs> until we can figure things out ourselves. So I'm not giving a, a direction to administration, but definitely something to consider. And we need to we need to have that discussion at a higher level. And like the mayor said, we need to we need to get uh, support from our stakeholders in that. But I'm I'm if it's a hill to die on this year to to get our land land rent relieved permanently, I'm in. Thank you, Councillor Journo. Thank you very much. I am not going to rant but I did appreciate both the input from our mayor and our deputy mayor. One of the things that has occurred to me as a counselor for the last three years is in our committee meetings, we don't have an opportunity to brainstorm. In other words, get ideas from counselors. It, it, it only comes out when we get to the point of frustration and it sounds like it's a bit of a over the board push for commentary. I think we have to find a way to brainstorm counselors to provide direction sometimes, and we might disagree on it. But I mean, I enjoyed the conversation, let me tell you. And I have two moments where I would like to rant. But uh, I, I still think we have to find a way in which there's lots of good skills, lots of good brain ideas from this council but we don't seem to get them out in a, in a way in which we provide a concerted uh, direction. And uh, I, I regret that, but I did, I, I, I did appreciate the commentary by both uh, Councillor Butler, Deputy Mayor Butler and our mayor, as always. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'll just say we're here, we're in committee um, I'm, we're open, I think, to brainstorming. We're open to it. That's really a feature of committee meetings. So have at it, Councillor Juneau. So um, I'd like some sense of where, some direction from Council as where we would like to leave this. Um, if this is what uh, we have to say for today, and we will resume this conversation in the new year, then um, it's fine. Uh, your wish is my command. I'm going to point out one thing that has been raised for me that I didn't mention earlier, and that is that one of the real str struggles I have been having in making an intelligent decision around moving forward in terms of tax requisition and overall budget is having some understanding of the impact of most funding, it is the most often asked question that I'm hearing from residents lately. Um, here we got three and a half million dollars of funding. Where is it? How's it being used? Why isn't that part of the consideration? Why am I not seeing it in these budget conversations? And it's a question I can't answer. And um, I know that administration has been very taxed in um, just dealing with the, the, the sort of co constant flow that um, COVID has created for us. Um, and so I certainly don't blame anyone, but it is hard to answer that question when raised by residents. So why can't we have a little bit better understanding of the impact of that funding that was announced uh, last summer? So it's a struggle I'm having and uh, something that would help me moving forward be, would be some kind of understanding of how that money has been used and can be used. And I just wanted to dot the I on that point, which I think was raised by Mayor Harland. So, so Council, where um, do we leave this? If I don't see some statements or hands coming up, then um, we will leave this agenda item for now. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, sorry, I just add in quickly. I, I think it was very appropriate uh, time to leave it after um, uh, Mayor Ireland's uh, comments. I, I really do support what he said and thank you uh, 
Councillor Butler for um, your additional comments, but I think uh, it's a great place to leave it as it is now. Sorry, Councillor Butler, Deputy Mayor Butler, you're you're muted. Sorry, um, I I apologize. I get my toggle switch back backwards sometimes. Ms. Melanchuk, I saw you unmuting. Um, were you trying to speak? If I, if so, uh, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I just want to speak to the comments made on the most grant. Um, and I believe what will be going on is that I'll be able to bring this to council for more discussions, probably early February. Um, so, you know, we'll probably talk about the budget a bit more, be able to talk about where we are with most grant and how we are going to be able to apply it in the next year or years, depending on how council wants to deal with it. Um, at the moment, I, I, it, it's looking in a positive favor um, that we might be able to, you know, use it in that context that has been brought up by council in a suggestion of putting it into a contingency reserve and maybe being able to apply it to um, the requisition going forward. So it will be a decision for council to make going forward and it would ultimately be what would end up changing um, the levy in in uh, that would go out. So if a budget is approved, it does not mean that the that the levy necessarily will go up if we have remaining funds from the most grant that we might be able to apply given if that is the choice of council in use and how they want to use it. So there, the uncertainty comes behind the year and that we are finishing up 2020 and that we have to ensure that we're okay in 2020. Once I have better figures, then I can come to council with those conversations. So for you to have more information to give to the public when speaking to them, uh, it will be coming, the conversations will be held. It just has to wait a little tiny bit until we have better numbers from 2020. Well, thanks very much for weighing in on that. That's, that's really helpful to understand, uh, for me at least. Ms. Melanchuk, could I just ask, are, um, are you waiting, basically, as you, as you said you were waiting to um, have all the numbers come in and look at the result, the 2020 results, are you also um, waiting for clarification from the higher levels of government as to how that funding can be used or is that now, do you now feel that we have a full understanding of where and how and so on that that money can be used? Are you still waiting for clarifications there? No, the clarifications have been made. The conversations have been had with the grant advisors. So I know where we can proceed after we figure out the 2020 year. So the, we, I'll be preparing requests for direction direct, and decision in the new year so that uh, council can make the decisions regarding the, the funds if, if they're remaining. But like I said, there's a good possibility that there will be some remaining to be able to uh, discuss going forward. Good, thanks very much. Uh, did Mayor Ireland, did I see your hand? You did, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Butler. I was simply going to um, suggest um, in response to, I think, a question that you posed, which is sort of where to from here. Um, and I would simply suggest that we now um, defer these discussions until I think it would be the 12th of January, our first committee of the whole meeting then. And um, we, we again start um, looking as council at our options um, without requiring anything from staff. Although the one exception might be, it, it seems to me that there was a document that we saw sometime earlier, um, which was a service related document, which might be helpful for us to um, have on the agenda just to, to help us focus on um, where we might go with respect to services. But otherwise, I think we've had the discussion, everybody needs a break. Um, particularly this year, and now is a perfect opportunity. So uh, I think just 
let's advance this discussion and pick it up again. Um, first committee of the whole meeting in the new year. I need no further convincing, Mr. Chair. And um, seeing no other hands waving at me to extend this conversation, I'm happy then to dispense with agenda item eight two, move to agenda item nine, other new business. Excellent. Agenda item 10, correspondence. Um, I don't have, sorry, I've lost my agenda. We don't have any correspondence on the agenda, am I correct? Right, we don't. Agenda item 11, council representation on various boards and upcoming meetings. Councillors, do you have anything to report in that respect? All right, seeing nothing. Upcoming events, so uh, we are uh, convening a strategic priority meeting following the committee, the whole meeting. Um, perhaps we can just decide at this point um, when we would like to do that. Uh, would we do that at one o'clock? Giving ourselves about a half an hour break. Uh, Councillor General. What are we gonna discuss in strategic priorities as a final year end meeting? What are we gonna accomplish? What's, what's, what's on the agenda? I have no appetite for a strategic meeting uh, three days before Christmas, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I would like to, uh, and the year with the meeting we just had, which I thought was fairly productive. And uh, I would like to end on a positive note for me to go to strategic priorities uh, today, later on this afternoon. I'm sorry, I, I just can't see us accomplishing very much. Well, thank you. All I can say is that we scheduled this meeting several weeks ago, uh, but I, I'm, we will decide what we want to do. Councilor Demoto? Well, uh, for some reason, can you hear me okay? Yeah. For some reason, we have this thing written in stone where we have to, have to, have to, have to meet for strategic priorities on the third Tuesday of the month. And if we don't meet, then we have to wait another month. And we seem to be incapable of saying, why don't we just have a strategic priority meeting in the second Tuesday of January or whatever it is. So, um, you know, there are things that we need to discuss. There, there's lots of things that we need to discuss and we just keep kicking it down the road. So uh, I'm with Councillor Journal a couple of days before Christmas right now. We've, we've had a lot of stressful discussions and, and a lot of stressful stuff to contemplate. Um, as much as I don't like moving what we have, I don't think we're gonna accomplish much today other than what we need to accomplish uh, going forward and uh, delaying it a, a couple more weeks isn't going to hurt anything from my point of view. That was a rant. Councilor McGrath. Thank you. Regarding upcoming events, there is a upcoming event on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. It's on social media, but I'm not sure how far it's been distributed. It's a initiative to ring bells at 6 p.m. and it's called Jasper Ring Your Bells on Facebook. Um, something that should be on every resident's agenda and uh, hopefully everyone hears about it. So if we could all spread the word, that would be wonderful to bring a sense of community pride and, and unity, though we're apart on Christmas Eve. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Butler. Um, it's ironic that a mere three hours ago, we were looking at an early quit, thought you were gonna set a record. Um, it seems to me that it was only um, two weeks ago um, that administration brought to us um, a suggestion that maybe we wanted to cancel a meeting for today. Um, and we all, I thought, agreed that we would effectively use this day for strategic priority matters, which have 
as Councillor Demona said, been kicked down the road interminably. Um, we are now um, freshly into the last year of this term. It seems to me that we need a work plan. We have a CAO, a new CAO coming um, in a little over a week. I was hoping that we might use a meeting today to at least confirm what issues um, we think we might be able to get accomplished in the coming year before the end of our term and have some sort of a work plan that we can present to our incoming CAO um, early next month. If council has no appetite for that, then there is no sense, but it seems to me that there are a great many of things left undone in our strategic priorities. And it is time that we get on with them and not kick them down the road any further. And I appreciate it's, it's very close to the holidays, but two weeks ago, we thought this would be a wonderful day for this discussion. And I, I continue to believe that there is no time like the present and I am prepared to, to spend another two hours or whatever it takes this afternoon so that we can at least have a game plan going into the new year. I'm, I'm in complete agreement. Thank you for that. Um, I, my personal opinion is we should convene that meeting. We can um, spend as much time as we think desirable or necessary, but um, we have been kicking this can down the road and it's about to get kicked into the next year if we don't at least begin some or resume some conversations. Uh, Council McGrath. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Butler. I, I was simply hoping to agree with Mayor Ireland. I was prepared to have this meeting today. I have put work into preparation for this meeting today and um, I'm available until three o'clock. Can I propose that we uh, resume that meeting at uh, one, that we begin that meeting at 1.15 and we can begin the conversation with uh, what we hope to accomplish. Great, that is um, what we will do. It's not really my call. If it's anyone's call, it's the mayor's call, but I think we're agreeing to that. And um, we, uh, we already have a Zoom link, so we will see one another at 1.15 for those who are able to attend. If there's nothing further under agenda item number 12, then I will move us into agenda item number 13 which is adjournment. Councillor keller Hermby, are you offering to make that motion? Certainly am. All right. Thank you very much. As to the question of adjournment, all in favor? See you all at 1.15. Thank you very much. Thank you all. See you soon. <laughs>